Look, it's no surprise, but I am an old. And with that said old, you start looking back fondly and reminisce about the good old days. You know, when life was much simpler, when there was no YouTube, no overpriced phones that can run the Resident Evil 4 remake, and when Limp Bizkit fans took some lyrics a bit too literally. And me being a gamer, you tend to yearn for the simpler times, when gaming franchises didn't take 14 years to get sequels, when we didn't need to worry about a 4 terabyte update just to launch a broken game, and when graphics looked like if Minecraft Steve was anorexic. Yes, enough beating around the bush. I've talked about this extensively on streams, videos, and other places where I hope you won't be able to find me. But one of my favorite consoles of all time is the PlayStation 1. This little gray CD Walkman that just so happened to be able to play Final Fantasy 7 is the console I grew up on and where my love for this media sprouted like a flower. It's here where I experienced some of my all-time favorite franchises for the first time, like Crash Bandicoot, Mega Man X, Spyro the Dragon, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, and many more that I'm not going to tell you about because I find your unfulfilled curiosity amusing. But as you can imagine, as time marched forward, graphics obviously got better, gaming became way more mainstream, and as we grew older, we realized how much better we used to have it. Yes, it's no surprise that with the mainstream attention most video games get nowadays, this medium seems to almost nowadays be entirely profit-driven, which has caused certain franchises and newer IPs to suffer a little bit in this new climate. We now live in an era where the most hyped and big budgeted games either launch broken, mediocre, or follow a service model that ensures that it's gonna get fucked within five months. Gaming just isn't what it used to be, and it would seem that with the exception of a few games, it just seems like most AAA games are heading in this direction, and it seems like the medium as a whole is gonna suffer because of this. But, if you were a little observant goblin, you'll notice that I say that there are a few exceptions, because instead of milking you dry for every single penny that you have, just so you can get a Nicki Minaj skin in Call of Duty, no. Some companies tend to take it a step further. They financially benefit off of your nostalgia. Yes, while most AAA companies want to try and push forward monikers that a lot of people bitch about but still buy into anyways, some companies decide to head back to their roots and actually try to go back and remember what made gaming such a huge deal in the first place. We've seen it mostly with companies like Capcom with the remakes of the Resident Evil games, dating all the way back since 2002. But other companies also threw their hats in the ring like EA with Dead Space, Activision with Crash, Spyro, and Tony Hawk, Sony with Shadow of the Colossus and Demon Souls, and Square Enix with Final Fantasy VII. The idea of taking a beloved game that everybody grew up with and modernizing it with better graphics, better gameplay, and quality of life improvements for older fans and a more modern audience is one of the best things that any of these game companies can do nowadays. Yes, a lot of people shit on the concept of remakes and remasters, but... You're wrong. Let's take a look at it like this. Would you rather play something like the Resident Evil 2 remake or Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? And with that comparison in mind, I already think I rested my case. But now I want to shift focus a little bit into what the actual topic of this video is all about. You see, sometimes I tend to scroll around YouTube and Twitter for far too long before bed, which probably is ruining both my eyesight and my sleep schedule. But sometimes I'll just randomly fall into a rabbit hole of different videos and binge them for hours at a time. My favorite ones personally are to watch 12 hour long videos about every single game on a certain console because I clearly have way too much time on my hands. But the one I've fallen into this time was both the inspiration of this video and a type of gold mine that I don't understand why companies haven't tried to jump onto yet. And what is that you might ask? Well then, instead of remaking classic games for modern audiences, why not make a modern game for classic audiences? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the good old fashioned D-Make. In a world where a lot of the best games nowadays take on the appearance of something that came out years prior, why not take already existing games and do the exact same thing with them? And that brings us to a topic that I've been pretty passionate about and is my current obsession when it comes down to gaming. Now, for those of you who don't know, even though I just explained it, the idea of a D-Make is to take a game that is more modern in nature and downscale it to the point where it takes on the appearance and gameplay of something that came out years prior. A game to give you a basic example of this is something like Cuphead. Whereas we now live in an era where 3D animation is pretty much the norm, for better or for worse, instead, Cuphead decides to take on an art style that harkens back to rubber hose cartoons of the 1930s. Another great example of this is another indie hit, Faith the Unholy Trinity. Instead of having RTX level graphics that'll make whatever system you play it on sound like it's capable of completing a moon landing, instead, this game looks like something you'd play back in the days on the Atari 2600 or the Amstrad CPC. But since 
since those games are original IPs, instead, what was to happen if we took Elden Ring and made it look like Resident Evil 1? Yes, that combination might seem a little bit weird on the surface, but firstly, Onimusha exists, so shut up. And secondly, this is exactly what Rustic Games BR was able to show us. And just look how damn cool this is. The pre-rendered backgrounds, the fixed camera angles, the 90s RPG menus. You can't tell me you're looking at this and think that this doesn't kick ass. And you can't tell me that a fixed camera angle hack and slash RPG based on one of the greatest games ever made wouldn't work because back in 2005, we got a game that pretty much did the exact same thing, except it was only on a console succeeding the one we're seeing here right now. And Rustic Games has pretty much been my go-to channel so far for wanting to get my D-Make fix. They've also got videos showcasing everything from The Evil Within if it was released on the PS1, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, and even God of War. So, you see, a hack and slash in this style could actually work pretty well. And hell, they even have videos showcasing games like Resident Evil 3 and 4's remake and Resident Evil 7 and make them look like if they were released back on the PS1. You just try telling me that you're a Resident Evil fan and that you didn't want to try and explore the Baker household with this old retro look. Legit, if Capcom was to release this right now, that'd be an easy few bucks out of my wallet. Hell, it doesn't even stop there. They even adapted Resident Evil 8 to play like Resident Evil Survivor. Not the best game to take inspiration from, but just come on, look how cool this looks! And with Light Guns making such a comeback in recent years thanks to companies like Sinden, this would be such a fucking cool way to experience Resident Evil Village if you just wanted to look at a pixelated Lamy Dimitrescu's ass. My favorite video by Rustic by far has got to be the PS1 Dead Space remake, because since Dead Space already was inspired by Resident Evil, primarily Resident Evil 4, have you ever wondered how it would look if it had just come out a decade prior? Fixed camera angles, check. Pre-rendered backgrounds, check. Tank controls, hesitance check. Tense as fuck old school survival horror combat with the aesthetic to boot, fuck. King check. EA, how the hell haven't you thought about doing something like this? But Rustic isn't the only channel that showcases what these modern titles would look like if it came out during an era where going into the internet would cause you trauma and hearing loss. For the longest time, one of my favorite channels was 98D Make, a person who hasn't sadly uploaded in two years, but showed us what games like Uncharted would look like on the PS1, Dead Rising, Bioshock, Hitman, Assassin's Creed, Manhunt, Minecraft, and games like that. Hell, they even sweeten the deal by making actual CD cases for the games. And as a person who played the fuck out of this console when I was younger, I can say that I just got the nostalgic tingles looking at these games despite them not actually existing. Hell, it doesn't even really stop at PS1. 98D Make also has video showcasing what games like Fallout New Vegas, Minecraft, and Cuphead would look like if they had been released on the original Game Boy. And whilst this wasn't a console that I grew up on, man, I would play the shit out of these games if I had the opportunity. Another channel that you may recognize more is Hulopi. I hope I pronounced that right. Now, you may know him for the RTX Morshu meme, which I will admit I had an unhealthy obsession with back in 2021, but he also has different stuff like Resident Evil 8 on the PS1, Halo if it was released on the N64, Death Stranding on the PS1, and even does some of his own skits using the PS1 style, and even makes skits with already existing PS1 characters like Crash and peak PS1 modeling. Another channel that I've recently found is 64 bits, and this has become one of my favorites. They have videos showcasing stuff like if Helldivers 2 and Elden Ring were released on the SNES, Skyrim as one of those shitty little tiger electronic handhelds, God of War 2018 reimagined as a turn based PS1 RPG in the same vein as Capcom Suicode, and even if Pal World was released on the DS. Now, there's a lot of channels that showcase different D makes, but I'm not gonna go through all of them here, so I'll link some of the ones that I found in the description below, so go ahead and give them some love. But one of the most saddening parts about watching these videos are that they're fake. Fake as in the games that they're demaking you can't actually play, which kinda makes me a sad little long. But you gotta still give these guys credit. They've got the talent, I just wish that someone would pick these up and turn them into full games because fucking hell, I'd buy them. But fear not, there are a select few people who actually did go the extra mile to make some of these demakes actual games 
games that you can play, like Dead Space by Fraser Brumley, which, okay, it isn't like the one we've seen before where it looked like old school RE, but still, seeing Isaac the Necromorphs and the Ishimura with a PS1 coat of paint is something I think is worth giving a go. Or Bio Evil 4 by Jipopo Thomas, which, you guessed it, is a demake of Resident Evil 4, but now in the style of a side-scrolling shooter akin to Contra. Hell, here's some Resident Evil lore for you. Remember how Resident Evil 1 was supposed to have a version on the Game Boy Color? Just now, say to hell with the colors and just release a version of it on the original Game Boy, and that's what JJ1992 was able to do. Or, probably the most famous out of all of these demakes, Bloodborne PSX. This is actually one that I've played before and I thought it was damn fun. Firstly, the fact that the game can run at 60 FPS, whereas the original game actually struggles to do that, makes this demake a worthwhile enough experience already. But I'll also say that everything I'd say was pretty much faithfully adapted from the main game. But just being able to see Yarnum in the same way we saw another PS1 game, Nightmare Creatures, it's just a simple joy to just take a stroll and imagine what it would have been like had this game launched back in the day, and how the industry would have been today if that was the case. So now moving on from all of that, as I'm sure if you've read the title, you're probably asking yourself the same question. Why the hell haven't these companies looked at these tiny little projects and thought, we could actually do that? It's a fucking goldmine that retro game fans like me would pay thousands for. Uh, okay, maybe not that much, we still have rent to pay, but still, take a game you've already made, put it through a hydraulic press, and the deed is done. Now, obviously, I think one of the biggest factors is that the industry wants to move forward with graphics and gameplay to bring stuff more up to date. Because, let's be real, I and many others are just a small minority of people who actually are interested in little projects like these. And also, let's 100% be honest, if companies did end up only making demakes like these and people eat that shit up without hesitation, we may head into a new era where we only would see games looking like they came out in the 90s, thus causing companies to never innovate with ever improving technology. But still, a demake of something every once in a while? I, I don't really think that would hurt all too much. Hell, why not look at some of these YouTubers and just hire them as like an entirely separate division exclusive for demaking your games? That way, you can also create careers for people who put their hearts and souls into creating these little passion projects for both the love of your IPs and retro gaming as a whole. I actually think that there's a market here and I can tell you right now, if Capcom was simultaneously going to release both a remake and a demake of a title of theirs, me and many other people would 100% be on board. So who knows, if any companies happen to see this, maybe try taking what I said to heart. I think a lot of people would appreciate the extra mile if they could relive their childhoods again, but only this time in the opposite of a remake.